Nice morning, get it all stripped. All right, Josh and I are snapping out our footings here. We've got things uh, totally square. Use a little DeWalt 5-beam laser for that. And now I want to get the other side of all of my walls. We are forming up the inside formwork first because we have to put a corbel around this entire thing. So we are doing the plates around the inside of the foundation. So in order to use the outside dimensions, I'm gonna have Josh hang his tape over my lines. So what I need to do is a wall thickness plus form ply. Eight and three quarters is one total wall thickness. Times two is 17 and a half. That way I can have Josh hold his tape 17 and a half inches over this line, and then I can mark 14 feet. And that will give me my inside to inside. Once I've got that figured out, I can use this 17 and a half inch distance as my reference for holding the tape over the line everywhere, and then go by outside dimensions and guarantee that my dimensions are perfect. This line here represents the plate. Then there's three quarters of an inch of form ply and an eight inch thick wall. So eight inches plus three quarters times two is 17 and a half. So we hold the tape at 17 and a half. And now I can go across here and mark my whole number out to out dimension of the plan, 14 feet. Makes things very, very simple once you get that first number figured out. Here's a nice perk of uh, putting plates on the day after you pour. Concrete still clean enough. You can shoot nails right into the concrete. We've got the HBT, the Tabo duplex nailer. Shoot right in there. No problem. All right, order of operations. Stand the corners, then we put on our top row of two by four, all on layout. Then we put in our sway braces to level everything, and then we fill it in. Yep. Beauty. Uh, super simple little wall, tie and steel here. Two rows at the top, one at the bottom, and uh, the max twin tire is 13 inches from jaws to head, so I am just gonna use that as a reference for my bottom row. Boom. Throwing some ties in, and he's running the A1T, the tie bag. For those of you doing uh, strip easy forms like these, um, heads up the Dog U nail pro that we actually sell. Uh, I think it's the best nail pro on the planet, and its jaws geometry are ideal. They do not slip off these stupid little ties. They bite really good. So if you do this kind of work, <coughs> check these things out. They're the best. And the hockey stick. Beautiful. You a little strategic where you want to put them? Gotta love some nice 
wraparound post bracing. Simple things and use simple, sim, simple minds. <laughs> Alright, here's how I uh, quickly build columns, accurately and strong. You just go form panels and then basically build it like a wall. So you do a bottom plate, top plate, put those two panels on there, top plate is matched, uh, laid out to match the bottom, put a sway brace on it, that levels both the panels side to side, and then brace it back to the building or stakes, brace the other way, and those three braces take care of the entire thing. Now I've got some bulkheads over there to nail in. And we put in ties in here and it builds quick. Uh, it's super strong, not annoying and slow like traditional strong backs and whalers and all that stuff. Quick and easy. Done. It's going nowhere. Champer strip Monday morning. I don't want to go get a whole big form oil container, so I'm using a little bit of this. We'll see how that does. Just need the top bit to look pretty, so uh, we'll see. We have got a front entry patio that is going to be right up here. So I'm going to bring a sauna tube up to the underside of our front entry slab. So I'll show you how I do that. All right, sauna tube is just going to be 34 inches long, just a little guy. So I'm going to make a few marks around here. Nothing crazy. And then when I make this cut, I'm gonna focus on keeping the shoe of the saw square to the tube. So I'm gonna be eyeballing across the shoe here and the tube and following my marks. Pretty darn flat. Okay, now I'm gonna build a little collar around the bottom of the sauna tube. So I'm gonna take two two by four widths, three and a half and three and a half is seven. Put that here, measure across my tube. I got 17 and three eighths, cut two pieces of that. Okay, now I'm just gonna fasten this tube to this little frame. So you can see how that fits in there nice. I'm just gonna throw a two inch nail on either end here. Do the same thing this way. This should be an inch and a half on both sides. Okay, I've got all my center lines on the outside of my little frame, and I've already got center lines snapped on my pad down here. So now I can simply drop this over top, line up my center lines and fasten that down. And there we go, sauna tube set. Uh, the location of this, plus or minus a half inch, is plenty good enough, because it's just going underneath the slab. I'll wet set some verticals in here that will be bent over and tied into the slab, but that catches a bearing, bearing point for a post supporting the front entry space right there. So, 
There it is. If it was taller, I'd throw a few braces. Something this short, it's fine as it is. Watching to make sure all the forms snap out, that there's no overlaps. Like right there, I'm gonna hit that one, watch that pop out. If those panels catch on each other, we got trouble. When we're finishing is I have a guy going ahead and screeding. So they knock off the one by fours, get the bulk of the concrete out of the way, and they leave a little bit extra, whoever's finishing, to work with and then that person to the final pass and then dial it right in. So Josh there, pulling spreaders, getting the bulk off, getting it clean, and I chase him and make it as pretty as I can while still keeping up a good pace. Putting in anchor bolts, I like to set them up so the corners get done really nice. So I'm gonna put one there, and that's gonna catch the plate coming this way, and then I'm gonna put another one just back of it to catch the plate coming from the other direction. So a plate will run through to there, and then there, I don't have to add any concrete fasteners at that end of the plate. Also wanna make sure we don't put any anchor bolts where there's gonna be a post to catch a beam. So I'm gonna keep those back a little bit. And on top of that, I'm also gonna make sure that we don't put any bolts where we have doors. So we've got a slider door here and slab on grade. So this is finished floor height. So I'm gonna stay out of the doorway and make sure we don't have to grind off any bolts later. wet set a saddle in these two columns. Um, what I like to do to get those nice and make it easy, I have got, I'll find center here. So I got six and three quarters from the edge. I'm just gonna make a little X one by tape at center, right there. Same thing this way, six and three quarters. Ballpark, there's center right there. And then I've got a couple long ties. I'm gonna put the slightest bend in those. And those are just gonna sit across here, like so. A little bit of bend, and I'm gonna put my dowel now right on my crosshairs. Work that down in here. And then that saddle will be suspended ever so slightly above the top on my ties. And now I can dial this in, this in, make sure it's deadly perfect. And then, when I get my other one set down there, I'm gonna sight down these and make sure the blades are in line. And that'll ensure that when I go to drop a beam in here, everything is all happy. Another important thing when you're done finishing the top is to clean the bottom. Way easier moving wet concrete away from the bottom of your forms than uh, hard concrete when you go to strip. All right, time to strip this foundation. Um, over the years, I've become more and more particular about how I strip. I used to, with my crew, take sledgehammers and bars, smash the whole thing down, big piles of junk, feels good to expose the concrete as quick as possible. Over the years, I've become more and more strategic about it. So what I do now, we'll strip all of the braces, we'll pull our top plates off of the forms, we'll clean those up, pull nails, we'll then pull off the bottom plate. Before I pull these ties off of here, pull a whaler off, I'm gonna remove the two by six because I can now jam my brick bar in here and pry this off of here. And that will allow me to remove the two by six without the panels coming with it. Then we'll knock our whaler bar off. Clean that up, pull the panels down, do it systematically. It's way cleaner. Uh, it ends up being faster in the end and it's much, much safer. I think John likes your, uh, your beam there, Luke. It's huggable. It's that good. Good. 
Alright, thanks, buddy. That looks nice. Alright, I'm out of here. You're on a vacation. See ya. Later.